The top stories tonight in Y News. President Rodrigo Duterte officially bans cabinet officials from attending Senate probe on government medical supplies purchase, but senators believe this is unconstitutional. Former Senator Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos finally reveals his plan to run for president in the 2022 elections. Meanwhile, the Philippine National Police sees no security threat in the last three days of the filing of Certificate of Candidacy. The country's inflation rate dropped slightly in September, according to the Philippine Statistics Authority. The Department of Science and Technology said the country will no longer accept COVID-19 vaccine trial applications for the general population. United States of America is on the brink of economic default as Republicans refuse to cooperate on the issue of debt ceiling. And thousands were evacuated and at least 13 have been killed as the tropical cyclone Shireen tore through areas of Oman and Iran. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Tuesday, October 5, 2021. I'm Angelo Castro III. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am Mariela Toza. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news. The Duterte administration saw a drop in Filipinos' approval for its efforts to manage national issues such as COVID-19 infections and corruption. But President Rodrigo Duterte is not concerned by his decreasing ratings as he is set to retire from politics in 2022. Rosalie Cos tells us why. There was a six-person decrease in the approval rating of the Duterte administration based on the September Pulse Asia survey. From June 65%, it fell to 59% in September. According to Malacanang, this reflects the present economic situation. But the government is doing everything to resolve these issues. Meanwhile, President Rodrigo Duterte is confident that he made the right decision of retiring from politics after his term ends next year. It's still good, but uh, I think it's time. Uh, there's always a time for everything. Even if you get uh, a 64 rating, uh, may panahon panahon ang buhay. So, sa palagay ko, tama yung the chief executive said he will dedicate his time to prepare for his defense in the International Criminal Court. Gusto nila umuwi na ako sa Davao at maghintay ako sa maraming kaso. Hintayin ko kayo. I will prepare for my defense na Yung ICC na yan. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, Senator Manny Pacquiao's office has already received the letter of expulsion from Partido Democratico Pilipino Lakas ng Bayan Cruci faction. The letter states that Pacquiao violated the PDP Laban's constitution by filing a certificate of candidacy under another party. Meanwhile, the group of Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel repeatedly stressed that Pacquiao's from the candidacy is valid under the constitution which he himself drafted. He also said that their group has closed its doors to a possible reconciliation with the Camp of Energy Secretary Alfonso Pusi. 
Former Vice President Dejomar Binay will run for the Senate under the United Nationalist Alliance or UNA. UNA's Acting Secretary General, former Kong J.V. Bautista, said in a statement that they are very grateful for the support extended to the former Vice President by other political parties. On the other hand, at least four members of President Rodrigo Duterte's cabinet will run in the next year's election. This includes presidential spokesperson Harry Roque, Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Salvador Panelo, Public Works and Highway Secretary Mark Guillar, and Anti-Corruption Admis Commission Chief Greco Bel Belkica. The Philippine National Police is anticipating an early campaigning after the period for filing of Certificate of Candidacy ends this Friday. In relation to this, PNP Chief Police General Guillermo Eliazar directed all police personnel to avoid posting campaign materials on their vehicles, police stations, and camps. We understand that there has been unresolved gray areas on this issue, but we assure the public that you will continue to isolate your PNP from any form of partisan politics. As a professional organization, the political stand of the PNP is an absolute necessity, and we intend to keep it that way. President Rodrigo Duterte has formally banned all officials and employees of the Executive Department from attending the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee hearing on the alleged misuse of pandemic funds. This is effective immediately, according to a memorandum from the Office of the President, which was signed by Executive Secretary Salvador Medialdea on October 4, 2021. It mentioned that the Senate hearings are meant to go on indefinitely. It has become evident that these are in conducted not in aid of legislation. It also stated the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee has stepped into the mandates of their branches of government and has deprived itself of the only basis to compel attendance to its hearings. A lawmaker believes the latest memorandum issued by President Duterte forbidding officials in the executive department should be challenged in the high court. Meanwhile, the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee chairperson believes they no longer need formerly executive Grisel Mago a day after she backpedaled her Senate testimony. Eileen Delgado will tell us why. The 11th Senate Blue Ribbon Committee hearing commenced today without most of the government's top officials, including those from the Department of Health. This, as President Duterte, through a memorandum order, directed all officials and employees of the Executive Department to no longer appear in the Senate investigation. For Senate Blue Ribbon Committee Chairperson Richard Gordon, this is unconstitutional. Mr. President, yung initial yung memorandum is totally unconstitutional. You're violating the Constitution. At uh, walang issue ng national security dito, walang executive privilege dito. So hindi na po ako magpapakahaba, magaling rin man po kayong abogado. Di umano at sanay kayong mag-abogado. Di po ba attorney Duterte? For Senate Minority Leader Franklin Drilon, the memo should be challenged at the Supreme Court. This has all the, <laughs> all the red, red flags of un unconstitutionality. It only uh, uh, it only covers uh, the House, the Senate. It only covers the Blue Ribbon. I cannot see any other memorandum as blatantly unconstitutional as what we have before us. Meanwhile, a day after retracting her Senate testimony, formerly Regulatory Affairs Head Grisel Grace Mago appeared virtually at the Senate hearing. At the House hearing yesterday, Mago recanted her statement on September 24, where she confirmed that they tainted with the expiry certificates of face shields that were supplied to the government. Mago called it a pressured response. However, the senators are not convinced. You be the judge, Mr. Chairman. Uh, <laughs> if that was a pressured response, and if he was if he was bullied by this representation, I, I, I don't think we need her anymore because she's already said what she said. Walang tulak, walang pananakot. She said that in a very calm way. Mahirap nang bawiin niyan, Ms. Mago. I'm sorry, Pauline niyan ka pa naman, ba't nagkaganyan ka? But anyway, pagdarasal ka na lang namin. Sana ligtas ka dyan sa mga bago mong kasama. 
Mago did not respond to the senator's remarks. The formerly executive is currently under the protective custody of the lower chamber. The next Senate Blue Ribbon Committee hearing will be held on October 12. Jorge Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. In other news, around 150 police officers may face criminal charges at the Department of Justice through the National Bureau of Investigation over the government's war on drugs. Dante Amento tells us why. The Department of Justice already finished its review on the 52 case files turned over by the Philippine National Police Internal Affairs Service. These include police personnel involved in the deaths of some drug suspects and anti-illegal drug operations. Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara said, based on facts gathered by the pnp -EAS, these police officers are administratively and criminally liable. Under Secretary Adrian Sugay added, the DOJ will forward the cases to the National Bureau of Investigation for case buildup or further investigation. If evidence will warrant, the NBI may proceed with the filing of cases before the National Prosecution Service of the DOJ. Yung sa aming nakita, sa aming rekomendasyon, uh, sa at, uh, at yun nga, at naging resulta ng aming rekomendasyon, karamihan dito sa mga kaso na ito ay talagang kailangan tignan ng mabuti at mukhang may mga proseso o yung ating tinatawag na police protocols na hindi natupad. Secretary Guevara assures that if other persons would appear involved in any capacity whatsoever in the course of the investigation, they will also be made accountable for. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the Department of the Interior and Local Government urged the local government units to fast-track the uploading of vaccinees data to be used for the digital vaccine certificates. J.P. Nunez details why. In preparation for the national rollout of the digital vaccine certificate by the end of the month, the Department of Interior and Local Government supports the call for support of the Information and Communications Technology Department for this project. The government aims to produce more digital vaccine certificate for Filipinos who will travel abroad through Baxert PH. Would like to enlist once again the support of our mayors na siguruhin po natin na ma-upload. Very soon po ito, no? Nag-uusap po kami lagi ng DICT. Very soon, magkakaroon po tayo ng national launch only for OFWs and uh, foreign travelers. But I think before the end of the month, national launch po tayo. Aside from Metro Manila and Baguio City, DILG recently expanded its soft launch in Central Luzon and Calabarzon region. OFWs and foreign travelers in NCR, Baguio, Region 3 and 4A may now get their online vaccine certificate through www.vaxcert.doh.gov.ph. JP Nunez, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Science and Technology said the country will no longer accept COVID-19 vaccine trial applications for the general population. Aiko Miguel will tell us why live. Aiko, why is the country limiting COVID-19 vaccine trial applications? Yes, Marielle, the Department of Science and Technology, Philippine Council for Health Research and Development's Executive Director, Dr. Jaime Montoya, said this is a way for the country to just focus on trials for special population and new platforms or ways on the administration of COVID-19 vaccines. Dr. Montoya said the interagency task force approved to actually limit vaccine clinical trials for new indications. This, as there are a lot of existing vaccine trial platforms for the general population in the country. Here is Dr. Jaime Montoya. Hindi natin masyado tayong tatanggap ng mga trials na that we look at the usual uh, age populations. What we are going to prioritize are the trials we look at special groups, for example, children, uh, high-risk groups, healthcare workers, and also the new generation vaccines which uh, have been developed to address the new variants. 
DOST explains Marielle new platforms of delivering COVID-19 vaccines are different from the usual mRNA COVID-19 vaccines. Other countries like India developed a DNA vaccine currently in phase two trials. It is a DNA vaccine against COVID-19, which is delivered through the skin without the use of needles. Hindi na to mga mRNA, DNA vaccines is one. No? Uh, isa yan sa titingnan. Number two, yung root of administration. Uh, Meron bakuna na titingnan na hindi na by injection. Meanwhile, eight vaccine manufacturers have been approved to conduct clinical trials in the country for the adult population. While six vaccine manufacturers are still under the evaluation of the Philippine Food and Drug Administration. Among this, Sinovac will test its vaccine among persons 6 months to 17 years of age, while Clover Biopharmaceuticals will hold separate trials involving groups of 12 to 17 years old and individuals with a human immunodeficiency virus or HIV. And that is the latest live. Back to you, Maria. Thank you, Aiko Miguel, for that live report. For the first time since August 10, the Philippines' new coronavirus disease cases fell below 10,000. The Department of Health, or DOH, said that 9,055 new patients tested positive for COVID-19, pushing the nationwide count to 2,613,070. Cases reported today brought the country's number of active cases to 103,077. Of the active cases, 78.8% have mild symptoms, 11.4% are asymptomatic, 5.65% are in moderate condition, 2.9% are in severe condition, and 1.2% are critical. Another 12,134 patients were able to recover from COVID-19, bringing the recovery count to 2,471,165. No new deaths were announced today due to technical issues in the DOH system. Meanwhile, the overall global COVID-19 caseload has topped 235.4 million, while the deaths have surged to more than 4.8 million, according to the Johns Hopkins University. The U.S. is the worst hit country with the world's highest number of cases and deaths at 43,853,214 and 703,402 respectively, according to the CSSE. In terms of infections, India follows with 33,853,048 cases and 449,260 deaths. In terms of deaths, Brazil comes second with 598,152 fatalities. Former Senator Ferdinand Marcos has already announced Tuesday that he will seek the presidency in the 2022 elections. Meanwhile, the Philippine National Police sees no possible security threat in the last three days of Certificate of Candidacy filing for national positions. Arlene Delgado will tell us why. Former Senator Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos has formally announced his intention to run as the country's next president. Marcos says he plans to bring that form of unifying leadership back to the country once elected. I know that it is this manner of unifying leadership that can lead us through this crisis. Get our people safely back to work for all of us to begin to live our lives once again. And that is why I am today announcing my intention to run for the presidency of the Philippines in the upcoming May 2022 elections. Marcos earlier sworn in as part of the Partido Federal ng Pilipinas. Last month, he was nominated as the standard bearer of the Kilusang Bagong Lipunan. Marcos has yet to announce when he will file his certificate of candidacy. Meanwhile, with only three days left, Philippine National Police Chief Police General Guillermo Eliazar says no security threat is being monitored with the anticipated influx of COC filers and supporters. For the past four days, including ngayon, Generally peaceful ito, not only here in this uh, harbor uh, tent area, but uh, including other places outside of uh, uh, this area and for that matter, the whole of the Philippines in so far as uh, this uh, first, kumbaga ito yung parang ek, pating political exercise. 
However, Kamala Commissioner Antonio Ko is appealing to all aspirants not to file at the last minute to avoid crowding and inconveniences. I would like to convince those who are planning to file their COC. Uh, you, have, you have tomorrow, Wednesday, you have Thursday. We avoid ho natin magkumpul-kumpul sa Friday. Alam niyo, uh, what if dumating kayo rito, kulang ang mga requirements ninyo o mali yung COC ninyo o mali yung mga supporting documents. You have time to go back and fix it. On the other hand, when asked about his reported senatorial bid, Eliazar has this to say. Alam nyo, nandito lang tayo para magtrabaho at uh, uh, yung aking nakikita last day of my service after more than 38 years of service, eh gusto ko naman na uh, marating ko yun uh, with flying colors. Kaya nga sinasabi ko nga, kung pwede hindi natin tulugan itong uh, remaining days na ito, yun ang gagawin natin. So, I don't want to be distracted and uh, kung meron man na gano'n na na nagsasabi, uh, I believe that that is just a uh, public appreciation uh, sa ginagawa ng ating police as a whole. A total of 40 aspirants have filed their COCs for president, vice president and senator and certificates of nomination and acceptance or CONA for partless nominees on the fifth day. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Vice President Lenny Robredo will make an important announcement on October 7, a day before the filing of candidacies for the 2020-2022 elections closes. Attorney Barry Gutierrez said the announcement will be made at 11 a.m. at the Quezon City Reception House. The country's inflation rate dropped slightly in September. From 4.9 last August, it slightly reduced at 4.8 this month. However, national statistician Dennis Mapa said this is higher than the 2.3% in September 2020. The primary factor that influenced the slight easing was the slower transport inflation and the prices of food and non-alcoholic non beverages. A group of restaurant owners favors having safety, a safety seal in their establishments. They also attest to profit increase due to its implementation. Asha Kadapan Jr. details why. Different government agencies urge the private sectors to acquire safety seal in their business operation. The certification is issued to establishments complying to the minimum public health protocols and other guidelines set by the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases. Its implementation is not mandatory, but the IATF allows additional 10% venue capacity in business establishment with safety seal. Resto PH President Eric Tang explains this resulted to an increase in their revenue. Safety seal is a mark lang of approval that uh, we are in compliance. So talagang maganda yung uh, may safety seal talaga. If I were a customer and I'm walking by a restaurant, Going to restaurant side by side, one says safety seal, the other, well, I would rather go to the one that has a safety seal. The Department of the Interior and Local Government, among others, urges the business owners to apply for a safety seal. DILG spokesperson under Secretary Jonathan Malaya explains that it goes through rigorous process, but only to assure safety of both the public and the workers in the establishment. Hindi madaling kumuha ng seal dahil kailangan magtalaga ng isang uh, safety officer doon. Kailangan nag meron kang mga kagamitan, tapos kailangan na rearrange mo ang iyong establishmento para sumusunod doon sa operational requirements ng isang uh, negosyo base doon sa alert level o kaya naman sa quarantine classification ng isang establishmento. If an establishment fails to pass the evaluation, they only need to correct the corresponding processes in their operation and reapply. Restaurant owners, on the other hand, find it convenient in applying for the certification. A lot of the businesses sa mga malls right now, madali makakuha ng safety seal because all the safety protocols, the malls themselves have encouraged the safety protocols. And we've been in this business and pandemic for over 18 months now. So a lot of the protocols that were required sa amin, we've already put that in place. Since its implementation in May 2021, about 85,000 applications were received, where over 43,000 have already been approved, while almost 10,000 were declined. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News & Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. And for the news abroad. 
New South Wales, Australia has its 46th state premier elected after Dominic Perrottet won the Liberal Party vote today. The change of state leadership in the most populous state of the country had to be called for after former premier Gladys Berejiklian resigned on Friday last week. The resignation was called for due to alleged breach of public trust when grants to multiple community groups were given between 2012 and 2018. Perrottet, age 19, or 39 rather, who acted as the state's treasurer until recently, acknowledges the state is facing a tough time given the spike of COVID-19 and ongoing restrictions in the state. He also thanked Gladys Berejiklian earlier this week for working tirelessly in the midst of the pandemic. The new premier assured the public that he will continue with the state's original plan of easing the restrictions by October 11. U.S. President Joe Biden tells Republican Party to get out of their way in an attempt to save the country from going into economic default with its trillion dollar debt. Marvin Finn will tell us why live. Yes, Marvie, please go ahead. Ariel, U.S. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell refused to help President Joe Biden and the Democratic Party in raising the country's $28.4 trillion debt limit. McConnell already blocked the action twice by refusing to vote on this raise with the Democrats. He said that the Democrats should act by themselves in solving the crisis through budget reconciliation. President Biden, on the other hand, adamantly refuses to go through both budget resolutions and reconciliation. The American chief executive said this will put the country's economic security at risk. So let's be clear. Not only are Republicans refusing to do their job, but threatening to use the power, their power, to prevent us from doing our job, saving the economy from a catastrophic event. Democrats are willing to do all the work stopping it. Republicans just have to let us do our job. Just get out of the way. If you don't want to help save the country, get out of the way so you don't destroy Marielle, the issue must be resolved in two weeks. Otherwise, major financial markets, both national and international, will be severely affected by catastrophic economic consequences. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer will hold an ill-fated vote on the debt limit waiver. Otherwise, the Senate will have to progress through another session this weekend if no progress is made then. Back to you, Marielle. All right, Marvie Delphine, thank you for that live report. Thousands were evacuated and at least 13 have been killed as the tropical cyclone Shaheen tore through areas of Oman and Iran. RK Lorca will give us the details live. Yes, RK. Marielle, the storm brought heavy rain and winds of up to 150 kilometers per hour to Oman's northern coast on Sunday, causing widespread flooding and landslides. According to Omani authorities, seven people have died in the province of North Albatina on Monday, while four others drowned or were killed in landslides on Sunday. In Iran, two bodies of fishermen were found, while three others remain missing. Oman's armed forces are currently rescuing people who had been trapped by flood water and are restoring damaged roads to get access into areas that require assistance. More than 5,000 people were evacuated from the coastal areas of Oman into eight shelters set up by the emergency services. Marielle, the National Multi-Hazard Warning System urged people to avoid wadis or valleys and ravines in the region as there is still a risk of thunderstorms with the cyclone moving further inland. Marielle? RK, how often do cyclones hit Oman? Well, Mariel, actually, storms of this degree rarely hit the northern Arabian Sea coast of Oman, and cyclones usually come in off the east of the Arabian Sea. Back to you, Mariel. Thank you, RK Yorka, for that live report. Meanwhile, a new pilot study found that babies have greater concentrations of microplastics in their bodies if compared to adults. Nisset Bendanya will tell us why. A recent study suggests that babies' exposure to microplastics can be up to 15 times higher than adults. This comes after examining the samples of feces from 10 adults and 6 babies in New York, USA. The two common kinds of microplastics, polyethylene terephthalate and polycarbonate. 
Microplastics can be produced by fragmentation or when plastic objects are broken down into tiny pieces, about less than 5 mm in diameter. Researchers believe higher amount of these tiny pieces of plastics are consumed by babies through the use of pacifiers, child safe plastic feeding utensils, CP cups, and teeter toys. Research suggests that smallest pieces are able to cross cell membranes and enter our circulatory system. With increasing concerns over damaging effects of indigestion of microplastics on human health, researchers support the need for further studies using a large scale sample size of infants and adults. Miset Bendanya, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And before we close, we will leave you with a final word giving glory to God from the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. It says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. And those are the reasons behind the news, October 5, 2021. Among the third. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Mariel Latoza. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Gusto nila umuwi na ako sa Davao. At maghintay ako sa maraming dada-dada dyan na kaso. Hintayin ko kayo. I will prepare for my defense na yung ICC na yan. Mr. President, yung inisyon yung memorandum is totally unconstitutional. Laki yung karapatan dyan. You're violating the Constitution. I know that it is this manner of unifying leadership that can lead us through this crisis. Get our people safely back to work for all of us to begin to live our lives once again. And that is why I am today announcing my intention to run for the presidency of the Philippines in the upcoming May 2022 elections.